it is such a kind of intimate, emotional depiction of that family and Absolutely. their story. Yes. Have Venus and Serena watched this? Yes. Oh, that, so mm. when it started, you know, I went to the family. I said, I love this story. I want to tell this story. And Venus and Serena said, um, OK, we, we will see you through the process and we will executive produce the process, but we're gonna have to see the movie before we decide to, whether or not we're gonna put our names on it. <gasps> Whoa. So I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I get the call a couple months ago, Venus and Serena are going into the theater. Oh. And they went in and saw the movie, and it was like literally the worst two hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting until they, they came out, but they, they're a mess with tears, and they, they love the film, and they, they put their names on it. So it, wow, it is a uh, photo. Yeah. But, but you've, you've You've kind of been through that process before, because mm -hmm. presumably with Ali... With Ali, yes. Like, Muhammad Ali, did, were you waiting for his blessing? I made the mistake of watching Ali for the first time sitting behind Ali. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> yeah, so I'm never going to oh. do that again. <laughs> never going to do that again. Um, you know, but midway through the movie, Ali turns to, to his wife at the time, and he says, girl, was I that crazy? <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, he, he targeted it. Because, now, Jessica Chastain, you are a lover of the Australian wildlife. Was this... <laughs> yes, I am. No, because was this picture taken in Australia? Were you with the kangaroo? No, that oh. was actually taken in New York. Oh, it's a... That was a New York kangaroo. It's a travelling wow. kangaroo. Yes. Now, is that a baby kangaroo? That is a baby kangaroo, but what makes me slightly disappointed is it's totally upstaging me on that cover. In fairness, it is. Right? <laughs> I mean, look at that model face it is giving. Oh, my God. I'm assuming... Pretty sure. You both look pretty cool. I'm guessing the kangaroo was quite squirmy. Yeah, I mean, they're very hoppy. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Technical term. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, you know, uh, likes to play, likes to hop around, but was very, very happy whenever I had the bottle because mm, okay. they would do anything for the milk. I feel you'd had enough of the hoppy because there's a picture inside the magazine of you with the kangaroo. <laughs> 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 I'm just like... That's so cute. <laughs> it's so sad because it looks like I'm just like, love me, love me, I love you so much. And it's just like, give me the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could at least Photoshop the bottle out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would have looked weirder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was rabies. It's fucking <laughs> <laughs> Because now, uh, Kirsten, big animal lover, Kirsten Dunst, as well. Yeah. But now, cats, you've already mentioned a cat. Cats are your first love. Well, I like, yeah, I do like cats. <laughs> I don't know about my first love, but yeah, <laughs> I'm a cat person. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, and you just got a new cat. Well, that cat adopted me. Oh, I see. So, yeah, yeah, you yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, did it wander in? Yeah, he just wandered in, started feeding, and now he sleeps in bed with me every night. So he just, yeah, he's just like, my cat, yeah. It is weird. You would never do that with a person. Like, it's, so, it's so specific to animals. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the name of the cat? Tito. I thought it was a boy for the longest time. It was a very, usually those orange stripy cats are boys. I don't know why I know this. But, um, but then my friend came over and was like, They're, those balls are very small. I don't think that's a boy. <laughs> like, well, girls don't have small balls. I, don't I, mean... know, I, 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 I was like, okay, if it's he, she, whatever it is, I'll, I don't care. I'll, still, Tito's a fine name for it. And so, yeah, it's a boy. But, but I think I this is a out. picture of Tito. You can tell Tito oh, is yeah. such a boy. Look at that. That is a boy. <laughs> Look at the man spread on that. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's got a third leg or is that his tail? <laughs> Gordon Definitely cats. a boy. That is a very, very cute cat. He just looks like cat. he wants a hug, really. Yeah. <laughs> he wants a beer and some chips. <laughs> is that the way he sits all the time? No, it's, he's just mid-lick. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> very clean. Oh, those tiny balls, he was just yeah. making them clean. <laughs> yeah. They're small, but they're really clean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is what all the fuss is about. Ariana DeBose is starring in the new Steven Spielberg version of West Side story and it's in cinemas now we should yes, say it it's is. in cinemas now and Rachel Zegler she was here a few weeks ago playing Maria yeah. so uh, talk to us about uh, who you you play in West Side Story well I play Anita yes she is the character that Rita Moreno played in the 1961 film and she won an Oscar for that so we'll just say that yeah no pressure. Throw it out there. Yeah, um, yeah. no pressure whatsoever and um, Anita's like the first lady of the sharks. There are two gangs, the sharks and the jets, and the sharks are a Puerto Rican gang, and they're fighting over turf. And literally, it's like six blocks. Um, and this entire story takes place over, like, 
48 hours. It's really wild. Mm. But you get to know Anita. She's uh, heart, soul, passion, body, dancing, singing, and she's just an extravaganza of a role. And uh, thank God for Tony Kushner and his adaptation of this script because it's gave me a lot of good material. So yeah, check her out. See yeah, what you, you, make you, you are phenomenal in it. You really, Thanks. really are. I mean, most of the dancing in this film yeah. uh, is phenomenal, and you are so good, good, Thanks. good. The dancing. And that was kind of your first love dancing. Yeah. Absolutely. I started dancing when I was three, you know, ballet tap jazz. I was a daisy in my first like little class. It was cute, I think. Um, but I, I speak dance better than I speak English. That's like, uh, that was my in into the character, as you can see. I can't, like, not. <laughs> and what was the, you entered a competition. Were you in, kind of a teenager when you entered the competition? <laughs> yeah, I was in high school. I entered a Shake It Up Cold Stone Creamery dance contest. They were introducing their new lines of, of shakes and smoothies. And uh, Fergie, I think her, her single was, Landy, 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 we've fallen down like, and she was promoting that. <laughs> Anyways, I entered this dance contest and I made it to the finals and there were five of us and I got to go to New York and I was doing my little solo. Trying to be really cool, wasn't that cool? But anyways, I won, and now I have free ice cream for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you've used it. Oh yeah, Are you kidding? I moved to New York and I was 19 years old and I was poor, like no coins to my name, it was fine. So when I ran out of money for food, like no 50 cent coffee, no hummus and pita, nothing, um, I would go to Cold Stone on 42nd Street and um, you know, use my free ice cream and my free ice cream cakes. <laughs> um, and that was my nutrition for the day. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Resource. Nobody knows what to make of that, and that's okay. <laughs> Everyone's going, how does she look like that? <laughs> well, you do have to stop eating ice cream after a point. It seems a weird prize for a dancing competition. I know. And here, never dance again. <laughs> you be pleased to know that uh, the 57-year-old Irish man uh, didn't know that you have a rapping career. You are a very successful rapper. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a big part of who I am, and it always has been, and it just kind of started out, you know, um, as a kid listening to his brother's kind of sweary rap cassettes and trying to imitate them to just being a, almost like my kind of therapy and how I kind of just almost work things through in my own mind. Because am I right? One of the things you you have about is uh, the the frequency with which you're stopped at airport security, but then is it a double-edged thing where now you're stopped at airport security because people know you rap about being stopped at airport security? <laughs> it, it has been slightly bizarre. <laughs> I mean, so it started off with me just being kind of terrified as a brown man at the airport and just knowing straight away that they're kind of like pressing the red button under the check-in counter as soon as I turn up um, and, and experiencing that. But now it's kind of like, you know, a couple of people will greet me on the way through check-in and they might know my work and they'll be like, okay, and particularly Heathrow Airport is quite South Asian, you know? So there's a lot of people working security there might know me or my work or be fans. So I've had this kind of slightly bizarre experience of being you're about to board the plane and I get pulled to one side and the dude who's swabbing me for explosives is uh, rapping my lyrics back at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, it's, qu it's quite surreal. So he'll be like kind of going through my underwear, kind of like making sure, you know, searching me, asking me questions and just going, yo, can I have a selfie when he's done? <laughs> um, and the thing is, you can't really say no because he, he could stop the game on the plane. So it's, it's quite a bizarre experience. But I guess, you know, the film deals with situations like that, of kind of being an insider and an outsider at the same time, which we all are in, in different ways, you know. This is Belfast. It's in cinemas now. And this is... Uh, it, it's sort of the story of you as a nine-year-old boy in Belfast. Yeah. W what prompted you to tell this story now? Well, uh, you know, I don't know how your lockdown was at the beginning. Uh, I had so many friends who got in contact um, who I hadn't seen for a while who were so desperate to, you know, make contact, and I was calling them, and just everything was about just sort of re-establishing human connection. We really felt the separation. And so uh, it reminded me, it sent me right back to the time when I was nine years old in North Belfast in a wee street, uh, mainly Protestant, but Catholics were there as well, where in the course of, I suppose, uh, 20 seconds, when I thought I was hearing bees in the air and then I thought I was seeing a swarm of bees, realising that, in fact, I was at the beginning of a riot uh, which would pass through my street and those 20 seconds would be 
really marked the sort of end of my childhood. When I came out of the house two hours later, the paving stones were lifted up from the... from, from un, The ground beneath our feet was gone. The paving stones were in barricades at either end of, of the street. And we were in a fortress, what had been a sort of playground before. It was yeah. a beautiful, harmonious neighbourhood. Not a, an idyll, but a home for sure. And, um, you know, suddenly life was different and the uncertainty that we've all felt, all this sense of being in the unknown and, and, and therefore our need for human contact and our need for laughter and our need for songs and dancing and ad hoc parties and all the daftness that we could possibly grasp at a yeah. dark time when we didn't know what was going on. That's where this lockdown sent me back to and I tried to uh, write it as truthfully as I could. And your, your mother, brilliant, played by Katrina Balfe in the film and Judy Dench is in it, Kieran Hines, Jim Dornan, but we must mention uh, Jude Hill. Yes. So, how old was he when you started filming? Ten years old. Uh, he got the part out of 300 boys who sent in self-tapes. He did about half a dozen Zoom auditions. He eventually uh, improvised in a final audition with me and Lewis McCaskey, who played his brother in it. And uh, he's amazing. He's just... He's a natural. He's got this great capacity to listen. He's funny. He loves football, for sure. Big Liverpool supporter. <laughs> Very difficult to get him... He's supposed to be a Tottenham Hotspur supporter in the film. And we have one scene where he simply has to say, is there nothing this Tottenham right half cannot do? And we got to rehearse the scene and I said, uh, uh, you've just stopped there, Jude, is there a problem? He said, yeah, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, what, no but he, he's, he's a Tottenham, he said, I can't say that. I said, why? He said, I'm a Liverpool supporter. <laughs> I, said, I, know, I, know, I know you're a Liverpool supporter, but you're an actor and he says he's a Tottenham supporter and you've got to pretend, I can't go there, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to go there. <laughs> Said, OK, well, I, well uh, maybe don't do it in the rehearsals, but do it in the tech. OK, let me think about <laughs> it. And then we did one take and we got it. And he said, is there nothing this Tottenham Hotspur right half cannot do? He said, great, that's terrific. Can we do one more? He said, I think you've got what you need. <laughs> oh. So never take the boy away from his football team. <laughs> oh. It's such a lovely, lovely film. It's just gorgeous. And this is Kenneth Branagh writing about his own childhood. Is that... The like buddy, the little boy, is Kenneth Brown. Ken, yeah. yeah. Yeah, correct, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Judy, you play...? I play his, his uh, grandmother. OK. And I thought, when he asked me, I thought, I'm not old enough to play Ken Brown's grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's in the 70s. But I am in a wig as black as a raven's wing. You know, I, it's, it's a very young part for me to play now. Because <laughs> you haven't played his grandmother before. Not his grandmother. No. I played his wife. And his mother <laughs> and his grandma. There's nothing left now, is there? Daughter, daughter. Now, daughter, of course. Of course, yeah. That'll come yes. next. And, and then you play... His father. Yeah. Yep. And we must talk about uh, extraordinary young actor Jude Hill, who plays Buddy. How, how old is he? Uh, ten, he was. Yeah, he was ten when we shot it. I think he's he was 12 now. now, yeah, or 11, 12 wow. now, yeah. And did you get on... You had a lot with him. Did you get on with him? Yeah, he's brilliant. He, he gives me a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, he's, he's pretty brutal with me. Like, he looks like he's giving you a hard time. Mate, he is, he is, he is. <laughs> in real life, even, even more so. Um, I guess where we come from, taking the mickey out of each other is sort of our currency, and we're all thick-skinned enough to be able to take it. But um, we've been doing, obviously, a ton of press for this movie so far, and his dad, Daryl, had to... <laughs> really sort of bullying me a bit. Um, his a dude was, he's 10. Um, and his dad had to take him aside last week and he said, like, I had a word with Jude to tell him to lay off you a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... I was like, look, I appreciate it, but I'm, I'm all right. Like, I'm nearly 40. <laughs> I, can, I can take it. But, um, yeah, he gives me a hard time. There's one really lovely scene where the family take you as the grandmother uh, to the movie. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yes. <laughs> had you seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> How I've did not you miss seen it? Anything. How did you miss it? Well, but, well, I'll tell you how. <laughs> because when I was little, I was taken to see Snow White and there's that terrible queen biting an apple and being very nasty to Snow White. Then I was taken to see um, uh, Bambi. <laughs> then there's the mother going up in a fire. <laughs> and then I was taken to see Dumbo. And Dumbo, there's a scene... I've never forgotten the scene with either Dumbo or his mother, 
somebody in a cage, not being able to get the other, and them both crying. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're set out to frighten and make you cry films. <laughs> so, so you were done after those three. So I, no, I think I'm not going to see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, because I've obviously <laughs> been floods of tears at something. <laughs> It's a great kind of uh, kind of late thirties, early forties pop boiler, but mm. but you saw that. I mean, the look of this thing is Amazing. so beautiful. I mean, the production design was incredible. It was like the whole set was like a raw shot test, you know. With you know, it's, it's so incredible, and the, every single detail Guillermo's across. We had the the lighter from the Maltese Falcon. You know, in, and we had the crystal from some other movie. I mean, he collects movie memorabilia. I think there's, yeah. Is there, that the lighter like, there? Yeah. Took about 97 takes to get it to work, but it was <laughs> working. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just you and Bradley. It's got a great cast, including uh, your Carol co-star, Rooney Mara. Yes, is, yes. Is it. But it was complicated for Rooney because she fell pregnant. Do you still use that expression, you fall pregnant? Once you fall over, you oh, you walk up, you go, oh, I'm having a baby. Anyway, yeah, she fell pregnant, so it was um. Yeah. Do you fall yeah. or get? At my age, you have a fall. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you are. You had a fall. Yeah. You have a fall. But so she she fell pregnant, but in the middle of the film because there was a big break. There was well the pandemic. Of course. Have any of you masked people out there who <laughs> think called the pandemic? Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, I, my my stuff was so hermetically sealed in the office, but then there was a break. It was, you know, I mean, everything stopped, and then everything kind of started to get yeah. started again. Yeah. We don't think of you in terms of action films, but in the debt where you played the young Helen Mirren. Yeah. What was the martial art you had to get? That was Krav Maga. Was it Krav Maga? Where's that from? It's, it's the Israeli Defense Army way of fighting. It's super intense. It's basically how you kill your opponent as quickly as, as quickly possible. As quickly as you can, yeah. Busy, yeah. busy, busy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Got people to kill. Uh. Yeah. I had like four months training with someone from the Israeli Defense Army. Wow. So uh, did you get properly good at it? Yeah, I was pretty good. I was pretty good. Like, I had a lot of fun. Can you demonstrate? Could you, like, if I... Could you break a board? Can you... <laughs> <laughs> like, karate kid a board? <laughs> yeah. Can you do... Can you, have you got moves to show Yeah, us? like, if someone came at me with a knife or something or had a gun, I could disarm them. OK, so if I've attacked you with a bit of fruit... <laughs> you might get hurt. No, seriously, would you hurt me? <laughs> I'll try not no, to. No, are you a bit bad at it? Like, are, are you a no, bit... No, no, I... Are you a bit trigger-happy when you break my arm by I won't, break your, I won't break your arm, and I'll go very slow. Oh, no, ser now... <laughs> I thought this was an amusing idea, but maybe... Like, no, seriously, will I, I be OK? I won't hurt you, I promise. OK, do you really promise? I swear, pinky Can swear. Can you trust her? You should totally. <laughs> I'm okay. wearing high heels, she for okay. sake. OK, 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 so... Right, where, so, am I just coming at you with a... If you were gonna stab me, would you really hold a knife like that? No, I'd be like, oh, sorry. Oh, oh wait, <laughs> no, I'm no. holding it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'll disarm you the minute you start holding it properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, like that? Well, no, okay, fine, sure. But no, how should I hold it? This is fine, so basically... No, no, wait a minute, no. Come at me. Come at me, perfect, perfect. Is that all right? No. Yeah. How, how do you hold... Like, if you're gonna stab me... You I'd be kinda... like... There that... you go, perfect. Let's do it again. Okay, Ready? so I'm, I'm coming at you. Yeah. Then I go like this. I'm doing it in slow motion so I don't hurt okay. you. Oh, oh, ah, ah, oh, oh, oh. That's, that's, oh, ah, 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 That's amazing. You OK? And you're in high heels. I'm very all right. I, I did it really <laughs> slow because I didn't want to hurt you. You didn't even bruise the banana. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. <laughs> and Jane Campion, she uh, allowed you to kind of stay in character, but yeah. more than that, she encouraged you to kind of live yeah. your life in the way that he might have lived. Yeah, very, very much so. And I mean, I, I sort of went off to, to do... I basically, she was very, very secure about all the things I was insecure about, but she said, look, whatever you need to sort of feel that you have ownership of this very different lived experience to your own, let us know. And I went, um... OK, uh, the banjo, horse riding, whittling, whistling, <laughs> I'm hungry, tax dummy. I mean, this man is... Masterful. He's a brilliant craftsman with his hands. He lives in this very brutal masculine world, but he has great sensitivity and craftsmanship about him, which is a kind of clue to the inner turmoil of his true self as well. But to feel that and experience that, I went off to Montana for a couple of months to, to learn about what it's like to live on a ranch and perform all the things you see in the film. That, and was it on the ranch you didn't wash, or was it on the set? No, it was, it, was, <laughs> it was in the first couple of weeks of rehearsal in New Zealand. And, you know, this character wears his work on him with great pride. The mud, the grime, the sweat and the blood. And uh, 
he doesn't wash reportedly in the book for sort of three or four months at a time. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he does spend most of his time outdoors, so maybe the wind is sort of <laughs> <laughs> carrying it away. But when you haven't experienced that in the 21st century where we're all quite clean, and this is, by the way, just before a pandemic broke out where we're told to wash our hands. <laughs> for like, I'm singing happy birthday twice. It's a very odd character to be playing, someone who just refuses to wash. And yet, you know, that was a very important part of trying to authenticate who this person was and just feel that on my skin. And then... And then, and then Jane really pulled the rug under me by saying, oh, let's go out for sushi. And I was like, no, come on, in a rehearsal room, it's fine. <laughs> but now you want me to go out into the world with this biohazard of a funk around me, just like <laughs> reeking of um, something very odd. Um, there are people out there in the world who really want to know what I smell like. Um, and I'm sort of a little bit self-conscious about that. Oh, yeah. Daisy, this is, this, yeah, Daisy's going to yeah. experience this. You'll get this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, that's why the lockdown was a good thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I was out there sort of having sushi and feeling very, very self-conscious. When the waiter just like... <laughs> <laughs> you served served, them. exactly. So we've had winner, winner, winner. Now, uh, Timothy, you didn't, you, you didn't win. You didn't win. If it, if it was as a competition, I'm talking about your effort to do well in... Was it an exam about statistics? Oh, God. <laughs> Christ, yes, this is true. I, I, I got a D on that, yeah. You got a D? I got a D, but, but, but I mean, I, I, I deserve that or, or worse. But anyway, so, so you're in school, you're doing an exam of statistics. Your teacher, she's Miss Lawton. Yes, Lawton. Oh, Lawton, <laughs> Lawton, Miss Lawton. Uh -huh. um, so... What were the other kids doing? Were the other kids just doing... Uh, yeah, variation. I mean, I mean, some people presented parabolas and things that were uh, more appropriate for statistics, uh, you know, varied projects. My, mine was not. So tell the people what you decided to do. Like a statistics song? Yes, a sort of, yeah. a sort of statistics rap. Yeah, horrible, bad, bad <laughs> level, worst level, yeah. yes. But no, but you came up with a whole rap persona, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not for that, I just had it. Oh! <laughs> so, Lil, is it Lil Timmy Tim? Yeah, it's part of my, uh... <laughs> so, oh, you're gonna regret, you're gonna regret yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Gingerbread so... man is nothing yeah. now. Lil yeah. <laughs> Timmy Tim, now it's on the internet. Uh, well, now it's out. But, I, 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 so, how do we have this film? Did you post it? How, do, how does this film exist? So I posted it, I did it with a friend on a green screen in school, and I'm pointing to different... I was gonna Photoshop my teacher's face in, but I got too lazy, so now they're just kind of weird in the video. I'm pointing around, and there's, there's nothing. Uh, well, here are the statistical <laughs> rap stylings of Lil Timmy Tim. <laughs> Let us see the probability you see me on TV. One zero 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 trillion percent. I'm a statistical gem. One in a zillion. Yeah. About to net a million. Yeah. Who they call it on these numbers? Call it a million. Statistics. Yeah. Statistics. Very good. Yeah. Little Timmy Tim. Excellent. Excellent. Listen, you're finally here, and I, I feel like. At the end of a couple of Bond films, we thought maybe it was going to be your last one, but this, we know, is definitely the oh, end. Bye-bye. And I was, I was sort of going to... At the end of Spectre, I was a bit down on everything, as, um, and I, I thought that was it, and I thought I was just... And I, I'm really, really happy that I was given the opportunity to come back and do this, because I think we've sort of wrapped up a lot of the stories and, 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 and you know, just a chance to come and do one more was just yeah. wonderful. And does it feel like, you know... Is it sad or is it kind of a celebrate? Is it kind of like, wow, I did an amazing it's, thing and I'm happy, and or are you kind of thinking, oh, shame? It's um, it's a, it's everything, I think, um, and and I, I, it's been close to 16 years of my life, and and it's felt, it, it's been incredible to do these films, and not least of all to work with people like this. To Bond movies don't get made very often. We we know this. It's rare air. Yeah. And to have the opportunity to make these films has been um, one of the... It's the biggest thing in my professional career, clearly, but one of the biggest things in my life. Um, and it's very emotional. It's... it's um, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad I'm sort of ending it on my own terms, which is really... I'm grateful to the producers for allowing me to do that. Um, but I shall miss it. I mean, I won't... I mean... I'll probably be incredibly bitter when the new person takes over. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, 
I'm happy for you, but I'm sad for us because genuinely you have been a fantastic bond. I mean, so, so. <laughs>